what we've done is made uh, soap with toys embedded in them that, that the children can see. And what we found is through research that that results in a fourfold increase in hand washing. So Field Ready is about localizing manufacturing. That is making things that people need where and when they need them. But I think for me, it wasn't just one moment. It was um, a process that happened over many years. I have a real passion for, for aid work, um, but also a lot of frustration. Um, again and again, I would you know, go to a rural health clinic or see a, a wash program that just didn't have the things that they needed. And so it was an epiphany when I realized that there could be um, the things that people need made where they're needed. And so that's the sort of spark of an idea that has led to Field Ready and us making things where they're needed. We're, we were lucky very early on to see some of the results of our program, but where I really knew that it hit home was uh, when we made some rescue technology, some air, inflatable airbags com completely locally made in uh, Northwest Syria. And um, the very first time that was used, it rescued a mother and daughter. And I knew then that we really had something that was truly life-saving. And we did that in a way that was a huge reduction in cost and used local supplies. And so um, that, that's, that's when it brought home and, and allowed us to think about other ways we could use the, the same sort of approach. Uh, to make something locally, it's about working with people and the resources and talents they have, and not just identifying the needs and going from there. It's really about a sort of a ground up approach. And um, we, um, you know, by far, I think one of the biggest challenges is just mobilizing the resources for what we do. And we've had such good results that, um, you know, convincing people who are far from the field has been often a challenge. But I think people who have spent time and really know what kind of challenges there are quickly see what we're doing and, and get behind it. We're quite happy about that. Typically, you would, um, you know, assess the situation and identify what needs there are and um, and then go rely on supply chains often that are globalized and rely on very long, cumbersome, expensive ways to get the materials you need in place. Well, what we found is some research has identified that 60 to 80 percent of all uh, aid money is spent on logistics in one form or another. So we're talking about a huge part of what we do. So the ordering, procurement, logistics, that's the traditional way. Um, now, we're not saying we're going to replace all that. What we're saying is that there's a large portion of the materials and, and finalized items that people need can be made locally using local talent, resources, and so on. Now, a lot of the things that we do are about making a, a bespoke piece that fix a, pieces of medical equipment, for example, or making large number of wash items. But sometimes it's about creativity and really making a difference in a unique way. And so one of the one of the things that really motivates me is one that has all come together in um, making soap that encourages kids to wash their hands more frequently. Any parent knows that that's not an easy thing. And so what we've done is made uh, soap with toys embedded in them that, that the children can see. And what we found is through research that that results in a fourfold increase in hand washing, which is a huge result. And we've been trying to replicate that project uh, as many places as we can. We work in a sector that has so many good people and so many people doing the right things. And um, throughout my career, I've, I've I'm lucky to say I've worked alongside some some awesome team members and seen amazing things in the in the most devastated places. Um, so some of my colleagues are the ones that I look up to that, you know, our engineers in Northwest Syria that have made life-saving devices, um, you know, in parts of Asia where um, they're doing things that have never been done before. 
um, it, it's those people that I draw the inspiration for and makes me work harder to try and do the right thing to support them. It's a, it's a great question because uh, um, I, you know, because getting my start was was there was not a clear way to get started when I when I got started. And I've, I've devoted a good portion of my career trying to uh, teach others and write about things in a way that's success, uh, accessible. Um, I mean, I think that a key thing to know is the complexity in which this field operates. Um, there's the really sort of um, in a way the easy part of it, and that's the the implementation side, but for every project that's being, every activity of a project, there's a whole set of complex uh, things going on in the background that cannot be ignored. And so understanding those and trying to navigate them in a smart way is is truly important and and um, uh, to be good and, and have a longstanding presence in the field, you need to sort of be able to balance competing priorities and that's really important.